The press and the media were always going to be very interested in what happened to Harry during the ceremony of the coronation. After all, he would published a best-selling book which was very critical of the royal family. And yet here he was turning up to a very important ceremony uh, which places the importance of the royal family at the heart of the Constitution of the United Kingdom. So there was a psychological problem here because in turning up you accept the importance of the royal family and you swear your allegiance to the royal family. And yet he had in his book been very critical of that very same thing he's now turning up and as it were in turning up is trying to show that he's positive about them. So there was a tension and there was a conflict. And on the other side, the royal family had the problem. They had this very, very important critic in their midst. And I think we saw some of these psychological tensions being played out on the day of the coronation itself, where Harry sat in the ceremony. A lot of press speculation over the fact that it was the same row as Prince Andrew. A lot of press speculation over the fact that he seemed to be relatively isolated throughout the day in terms of his taking part in the ceremony. He didn't seem to be surrounded or talking to a lot of members of the royal family. He didn't seem psychologically any more to be embraced into their bosom. If anything, it seemed to be a slightly standoffish relationship. He also, and some people would say this is psychologically very significant, left early, the excuse being that the kind of reason given up front was he was trying to make it back for his child's birthday. I think that some people would argue that there is a psychological significance to this because what he is saying is he places his close, intimate family relationships as more important than his relationship with the royal family, with the institution. And the core value system of the royal family is that you put your allegiance and your sense of service to the state and to the king above everything else. And that has been, in a sense, the core tension between Harry and the royal family. And I believe we saw that played out yet again at the coronation. The fact that it was played out yet again suggests there has been no reconciliation, no reapprochement, and it leads some people of a psychological bent to be pessimistic about there ever being a possibility of a reconciliation between these two parties. In William's speech, much has been made of the fact that he emphasised the role of service in our relationship with the royal family or in any relationship with the royal family. Some people are wondering if there was a pointed, slightly critical reference to his brother Harry's different relationship with their understanding of how it is to be a member of the royal family. Some people would say it's so self-evidently obvious that one is there to provide service. Why bring it up? Why mention it? Why emphasize it? Is it a reminder to someone who doesn't quite get it? Or is it a reminder of his relationship or a swearing of allegiance yet again to his relationship with his father, the king? There is an important question mark over to what extent is William laying out his territory of what kind of future king he will be. In mentioning the word service, is there a pointed criticism towards Harry? Is that going to then dominate his reign? Um, or is he marking out new territory? It's still not clear from the speech what he's really saying in terms of his relationship with the royal family. A coronation is a very fraught occasion because of the huge potential for things to go wrong. And if things go wrong in some sense, the massive media attention does mean the whole thing can backfire in an enormous way. Prince Andrew represents one of the key things that could have gone wrong. And there is very much a sense in which psychologically it looks like the royal family masterminded the whole thing. Because actually Prince Andrew has attracted very little media attention and very little criticism. The reason it's been masterfully handled psychologically is if he was completely absent, that would have drawn a lot of attention and perhaps criticism or gossip and rumour. 
And if he had played a role whereby it looked like he was actually taking some attention away from the king or William, for example, then that would have brought a lot of media attention and possible press criticism. But in fact, the coronation has come and gone very smoothly. Nothing much appears to have gone wrong. And Andrew, as a factor that could have caused trouble, has actually disappeared. So all in all, I think Andrew's presence and role was masterfully handled psychologically. The press have drawn attention to the fact that Louis was quite, as a, as a child, um, excited and, and agitated for some of the ceremony, but also bored. This is only natural for someone of that age. And I think there's lots of photographs of him yawning. Unfortunately, uh, poor child, he has a whole um, a lifetime of this to look forward to, of sitting through a lot of ceremonies that they're going to find really rather boring. Interestingly enough, kings who've written about coronations have repeatedly said they didn't look forward to it. They didn't look forward to the awesome sense of responsibility and the way their lives were going to change. They much preferred their life before the coronation. So, interestingly enough, there is a sense in which uh, a coronation rests heavily on the shoulders of a king in a way that many of the subjects who attend the coronation and celebrate it may not realise the full psychological significance for the person at the heart of the crowning ceremony.